Welcome to the National Center and State Collaborative Community of Practice webinar. This presentation is part two of ensuring access to the Common Core and focuses on a six-step process for planning instruction on the Common Core State Standards modeled using the NICSIC curriculum and instructional resources. This presentation is considered a draft. In keeping with the project's goal to provide quality instructional resources, feedback on the presentation and materials is welcome and valued. The goals of this webinar are to introduce a six-step process for planning access to grade-specific standards-based instruction, to understand when to use NICSIC mathematics resources to support access to and involvement in general education lessons for students with a significant cognitive disability, and to understand when to use the NICSIC mathematics resources to implement tiered interventions within general education lessons for students with a significant cognitive disability. In our webinar today, we will go through a process for planning instruction and ensuring access to the Common Core State Standards. In our process, there are six steps. Identify the standards in the general education lesson. Identify the outcomes or learning objectives for all students. Determine strands, instructional families, and grade level core content connectors related to the standards and objectives. Examine the instructional activities for all students. Determine supports for students with a significant cognitive disability. And use the NICSIC curriculum and instructional resources as needed. As you can see, Step 6 is actually embedded throughout the entire process. We will discuss each of these steps in detail by modeling the process through one activity of a sample general education lesson. We have reviewed each of these instructional resources in Part 1 of this webinar. Now we will look at determining when a resource may come into play. There are currently two universally designed mathematics units available to use as practice for how to consider access to the Common Core State Standards. There is one elementary and one high school unit. A middle school mathematics unit will be available soon as well as an elementary, middle, and high school English language arts units. We will go through the six-step process using the high school mathematics unit and the NICSIC online instructional materials. All of the NICSIC resource materials will be available online. This is a screenshot of how materials may be accessed on the NICSIC wiki. We will demonstrate the steps for planning access to the Common Core State Standards through the resource materials and the NICSIC wiki. The main page of the wiki will bring up the schema, which we are familiar with. Here, you will find links to the instructional resources, the pink area, and the curriculum resources, the purple area. Please note, the wiki is under construction and may not look exactly like this when finished. Step 1 of the process states, identify the standards, which we can find by clicking the curriculum and Resources tab. The Curriculum Resources tab provides links to all the curriculum resources or what to teach section of the schema, which includes Common Core State Standards, Learning Progressions Frameworks, the Core Content Connectors, the Graduated Understandings, which house the instructional families, and the Content Modules. The Instructional Resources tab provides links to all the instructional resources 
or how to teach section of the schema, which includes curriculum resource guides, instructional units, graduated understandings, housing both the instructional families and the element cards, the instructional resource guide. We will use the instructional units as a framework for walking through the six step process and looking at how the materials work together. Let's start with the high school mathematics unit. Each instructional unit begins with a list of the Common Core State Standards, learning targets from the learning progressions frameworks, and the core content connectors organized in the instructional families. This leads us to step one. Identify the content standards. Prior to any instruction, it is important to identify and understand the concepts and skills of the standards to be taught. The Nixic Wiki will include a link to the Common Core State Standards for easy access. You can also reference the universally designed units of study to see standards addressed within the sample units, and you can use the content modules to clarify content concepts if you have any questions before you begin planning. This is an example of the list of standards from the High School Mathematics Unit. Each list associated with the instructional unit begins with the Common Core State Standards. When planning instruction, if you begin with a general education lesson, this part should already be done for you, or at least made easier through collaboration with a general education teacher, or through accessing an instructional unit on the CPOMS website. There are several guiding questions to consider when completing Step 2 of the process. First, ask yourself, what are the desired outcomes for all students? When considering the answer to this, remember, we are thinking of all students, not just students with a significant cognitive disability. Once the desired outcomes have been determined, then we must consider how students will demonstrate those desired outcomes. What is the observable student performance that will show acquisition of the knowledge and skills? Several NICSIC resources are available to use with this step. You can use the content modules for content clarifications, the curriculum resource guides, for descriptions of outcomes, and the element cards for essential understandings. In the high school instructional unit example, the student outcomes are to convert units using standard or known conversion units, use appropriate known formulas for area, and solve multi-step problems involving one unit of measure. Each unit provides a vocabulary list. These are key words used throughout the unit's lesson and will assist the teacher in locating the content module that best fits the vocabulary and concepts taught. There may not be a content module for every concept. In that case, we recommend using an internet search engine to find additional clarifying information and examples. The Curriculum Resource Guide is intended to be a support for teachers to understand how a concept, such as teaching area and surfaced area in the middle school grades, can be taught to students with different instructional support needs and initial understandings, and how that concept changes 
and therefore the instruction changes, across the grades and within the grade span. Each guide covers a range of core content connectors for grades 3 through high school. This example for grade 8 in measurement shows a performance example for area. This is a sample of an element card. We were first introduced to the element cards in part 2 of the Graduated Understandings webinar. The first component of the element card is the Common Core State Standard. This is an 8th grade element card based on measurement and data, standard number 4. Element cards also contain the essential understandings, which may be helpful when considering step 2, student outcomes. Once the outcomes for all students have been determined, the next step is to determine strands, instructional families, and grade level core content connectors related to the standards and objectives. This will help ensure instruction on prioritized concepts and skills for students with a significant cognitive disability. NICSIC's resource materials related to this step include content modules for content clarification, and instructional families to identify relevant strands and core content connectors. Once you know what Common Core State Standards you are working towards, consider what is most helpful for you after that. The Learning Progressions Frameworks for the concept of learning progressions, or the Core Content Connectors for the specific skills related to the Common Core State Standards. Remember, the instructional families include both the learning progressions and the core content connectors. After examining the prioritized standards through the core content connectors, we are ready to examine the instructional activities for all students. Identify instructional activities that will move the students toward achievement of the objectives. We recommend always starting with a general education lesson, examining all the typical activities included in a unit, and begin to consider all the ways a student may access and learn within each type of activity. Implement the principles of universal design for learning in your lessons. NICSIC materials related to this step include universally designed lessons and units, for examples of instructional activities and use of curriculum resource guides for additional instructional activities and ideas. The UDL units have multiple lessons. Teaching requires designing instructional plans that promote learning for all students, whatever their entry point is into the content. The UDL instructional units contain lesson plans that illustrate how to target the core content connectors based on the Common Core State Standards within general education lessons that are accessible to all students using universally designed for learning principles, providing equal opportunities for all students to learn the content. The design and content of the UDL instructional units and lessons promote co-teaching and collaborative planning between general and special educators. The lessons provide models of universally designed planning for an entire class of students that address representation and expression and engagement. They offer a model for how to engage all students in well-designed instruction based on the core, Common Core State Standards. Let's look at, a less, at Lesson 1 of the Sample High School Unit. All the lessons of the UDL instructional units follow the same format. Each provides a list of materials needed to implement the lesson, as well as the content vocabulary that will be used throughout the lesson. 
Consideration of the most salient vocabulary to include in a communication system should be considered prior to instruction. Each lesson starts with an introductory activity to help the student orient to and connect with the concepts taught. The instruction should also activate the student's prior knowledge. Lesson 1, Introduction, starts with everyday examples that help define perimeter and area. Look at the first example. A runner is practicing by running along the fence line of a parking lot. Is he running the perimeter of the parking lot or is he running the area? Small group exercises use common shapes such, a, such as rectangles and squares placed on grid paper to find the perimeter and area. Step 4 has been broken out into a little more detail for students who may need specific individualized supports to access all parts of the instructional activities. When planning for specific individualized supports, it's important to examine all activities of the general education lesson to ensure access and consider all students. Use the principles of universal design for learning and then consider the additional specific student support needs on an individual basis. Those supports needed to access and actively participate in all activities. And then add additional activities as necessary. Also note, review the sample universal designed units of instruction to practice examining general ed activities and determining where more specific support needs may exist. As we look at the general education lessons, we need to look at how each student is actively participating in each part of the instructional activity. How will the student access instruction? What is needed to ensure targeted information is provided in the student's mode of communication? What will engage the student in the activity? Once the general requirements of an activity are determined, such as listening during a lecture, note-taking, reading, etc., a menu of supports can be created. This menu of supports can be used as a resource for all people involved in teaching a student who may need specific supports in place when planning instruction. Also notice that opportunities to use expressive and receptive communication skills are naturally present during instruction. The menu of supports can help ensure that all instructors involved with the student take advantage of those opportunities for the student to communicate throughout instruction. A menu of supports can help plan for how a student is listening during lecture, taking notes, or participating in discussion. The student can be given a selection of tactile or graphics of the key points in the lecture and can select each representation throughout the lecture. Lectures might be provided digitally. The student can use graphics or tactile representations to collect notes. Notes could be transcribed in picture symbols. Notes can be pre-printed and the student could mark as they follow along. Communication devices pre-programmed with key points could be used to organize notes. Adapted keyboards could be used to transcribe notes. Digital text and text readers and photographs may also be used. A student could select the representations from their notes to respond to questions or add to discussions. Communication devices should include relevant content vocabulary and might include menu interfaces for each content area. Once the general requirements of an activity are determined and a menu of supports has been created, then consider whether there are any additional supports a student may need specific to an activity or the concepts in the lesson. Supports beyond those identified in the menu of supports. 
What specific vocabulary needs to be included in a student's communication system? Does the student need to build some background knowledge before the start of any lesson or activity within the lessons? Are there considerations for physical or sensory access, positioning, and or positive behavior supports? The sample instructional units provide examples of multiple means of representation, expression, and engagement, and for additional support considerations. The lessons provide models for planning that incorporate the principles of UDL for all students in well-designed instruction based on the Common Core State Standards. Examples of multiple means of representation, expression, and engagement specific to each part of a lesson are included and provide flexibility in all aspects of the lesson for active participation. The lessons also include additional support considerations in reading and communication for students who may require more intensive support needs. These additional considerations are provided in each part of each activity under the headings of additional considerations for emerging readers and emerging communicators. Emerging readers may be students who predominantly communicate through words, pictures, symbols, and tactile representations consistently and can make meaning of each within the concept taught. Emerging communicators may be students who are learning a communication system or do not yet have a consistent system in place. Sometimes additional resources are provided as examples of supports for representing or demonstrating the content. This is an example of a resource included in the High School Instructional Unit for Lesson 1, Introduction, Activate Previous Knowledge. It is a PowerPoint created for a student. This is one way perimeter may be presented or explored by a student during a lesson. This is another example of a resource included in the High School Instructional Unit for Lesson 1 Introduction, Activate Previous Knowledge. This is one way area may be presented or explored by a student. Step 6 of the planning process, Use Instructional Resources as Needed, is incorporated within each step of the planning process, but may also be considered for tiered interventions or additional interventions. The next several slides will review the materials that are being made available on the NICSIC Wiki. Those include the UDL instructional units, content modules, curriculum resource guides, element cards, masses, and instructional resource guide. The curriculum resource guides offer examples of how the content is taught in general education, ideas for real life use, examples of what student performance may look like, and ways to promote college and career readiness. The guides are designed to help teachers develop the background knowledge they need to prepare students for the content, as well as the NICSIC alternate assessment. Teaching effectively to a heterogeneous group of students, possibly in multiple grade levels, is challenging. To do so effectively, teachers need to build on their knowledge of instructional strategies that efficiently promote student learning. The Instructional Resource Guide helps educators to build knowledge of essential, evidence-based, systematic instructional methods and defines the use of these strategies that are used in the math activities with scripted systematic instruction, or the MASSEs, to teach students targeted skills. 
The Masseys offer intensive instruction using evidence-based practices. The Masseys are a resource for tiered interventions as needed throughout general instruction. Using scripts, the Masseys offer a guide for instruction with graduating levels of difficulty, ranging from the first steps of teaching the content to students with little or no understanding of the content, to building understanding of the target concepts of the core content connectors, using real-life word problems, and using hands-on activities aligned to grade-level content. The Masseys come with tools such as data sheets that can be used for monitoring progress towards mastery, and a skills test to practice responding in a testing context. The Masseys may be three to five pages long, but are intended to build the student's base knowledge and ready them to return to the lessons within the UDL instructional unit. There is a back button in each Massey that will return you to the last page visited in the lesson. Additional support materials may be provided through the wiki, such as links to Khan Academy or Cool Math on perimeter and or area. By clicking on the back button, you will return to the lesson section. In this webinar, we have introduced a six-step planning process so that each student has access to grade-specific standards-based instruction. Here you can review the six-step six process and remember that all of the instructional resources provided through the NICSIC Wiki and the NICSIC Grant are all incorporated within this six-step. We have also reviewed when to use these NICSIC instructional resources for mathematics in particular to support access to and involvement in general education instruction as well as considerations for when to use the NICSIC materials to implement tiered interventions. This is a list of the resources used in addition to the NICSIC materials to create this webinar. Thank you for your attention and have a great summer. Bye!